So in the previous video, we looked at the idea that the adaptive immune response contains both a humoral response and a cell-mediated response. And in order to activate either of those or both of those, you need to have helper T cells effectively know what they're doing and what to do upon an infection, upon a pathogen invasion. Let's continue our discussion on these middlemen, these helper T cells, by entitling the next flowchart, Helper T cells 2. So we're going to sort of put some more details to this idea of how a helper T cell actually connects both the humoral and the cell mediator response and activates both as well. So in order to understand that, we have to look at the molecular level of understanding between a T cell, helper T cell, and an antigen presenting cell. In order to understand that, in immunity, there's always going to be a very specific receptor and receptor to receptor recognition connection that has to occur in order for proper activation. So there are going to specifically be two parts of a helper T cell, T sub H, that will bind to an antigen presenting cell. Two parts of helper T cell that bind to an antigen presenting cell. This binding, this recognition, is what's going to activate a helper T cell. But we need to really specifically make sure that we have the proper binding and recognition of antigen to helper T cell receptors. So what we have is the following. Number one, so there are two parts. Let's do the first part. You need to have the antigen receptor effectively bind on the antigen presenting cell. The antigen receptor is found on the helper T cell. The antigen receptor, therefore, is otherwise going to just be known as the TCR, the T cell receptor. The structure that's transmembranely connected to the plasma membrane of the helper T cell that binds to the receptor that's on the antigen, uh, that's on the antigen presenting cell. So we'll just state the following. It can be a little confusing at first, but just take a look at this. The antigen receptor, the TCR, that receptor on the helper T cell, binds to the antigen fragment. Who's containing the antigen fragment? The antigen presenting cell, right? And the antigen fragment is not just floating around on the outside of the APC. It's confined to and found within an MHC class 2 molecule. So what you have is TCR plus MHC2 on the antigen presenting cell is what's going to give you the initial connection that you need. So this is what's going to happen first. You have TCR bind to the antigen fragment and the MHC class 2 molecule that's displaying that antigen. This is displaying is occurring by the antigen presenting cell. And then simultaneously, in order to really ensure you have a proper fit, you also need to have the binding of what is known as CD4. CD4 is an accessory protein that's found on the surface of a helper T cell. It's an accessory protein on the T cell surface. Now, the specific T cell that contains this are going to be always on helper T cells. Helper T cells are defined as helper T cells if they have a CD4 receptor, a CD4 accessory protein on their surface, because this is going to be a structure that also binds exclusively to MHC2. And we know that the thing that binds to the immune cell that binds to MHC2 is always going to be a helper T cell. Therefore, you have CD4 binding also to MHC2, just like the TCR is binding to MHC2. This extra binding makes sure that it keeps the APC, the antigen presenting cell, and the T helper cell, both of which are connecting to each other right now in this very specific recognition of receptors, and makes sure that they stay together. So you have this really double, uh, this double effect of two parts of the helper T cell, the CD4 accessory protein and the T cell receptor, making sure they both bind to the MHC class two molecule presented on the outside of the antigen presenting cell. 
Why are you binding to the MHC class 2 molecule? Well, that's the molecule that contains the fragment, antigen fragment. Well, what's the big deal about the antigen fragment? The antigen fragment is the thing that's causing disease or sickness, right? It's a piece of the pathogen. And therefore, if you can effectively recognize an antigen presenting cell, you are effectively recognizing the fragment, the antigen fragment of the antigen presenting cell. Therefore, you're recognizing that there is a disease within the body, a pathogen within the body. And now you as a helper T cell have to do your job of telling everybody else, hey, problem, antigen presenting cell found something. It's time for us to get into effect. No. So let's take a look at that idea of activation in a little bit more detail. So when you have a helper T cell with this very specific and super sort of uh, a recognize, recognizable binding pattern that occurs here, this T helper cell binding is to the APC stimulates, stimulates the APC to produce what are known as cytokines to produce cytokines. Cytokines are the chemical signaling molecule of the immune system. These are going to be very important in alerting the other parts of the immune system or really activating immune cells altogether. Therefore, we consider cytokines simply as signaling or activating molecules because what they do is, once the APC starts producing cytokines, this is going to trigger the T helper cell to produce its own cytokines as well. So it's a cytokine-cytokine relationship happening here. So cytokines from the APC are going to go to the helper T cell. The helper T cell is going to say, oh, I see some cytokines. I'm going to make my own cytokines now to produce own cytokines because that's the signal that was just sent to the helper T cells. Big deal. Why? What are these helper T cell cytokines going to do? What they're going to do is they're basically going to ensure that the helper T cell gets fully activated. It can only be fully activated if two things happen. You need to make sure that the helper T cell gets an effective binding to an antigen fragment displayed on an MHC class 2 on an APC. That's step one. But you also need to make sure that you have a correct cytokine activation signal sent to the helper T cell from the APC. You cannot have this signal correctly sent to the helper T cell unless you have correct binding. That's why this is sort of the first thing we go over. Once you have correct binding and you have correct signaling, you have a full activation of a helper T cell. That means full activation of any cell within immunity causes proliferation, causes clonal selection. So the helper T cell itself, upon full activation, begins to proliferate. It begins to divide constantly and extremely. This creates the following. This is a big, big systemic effect to really help fight this pathogen that's infected the cells or within the body. This creates tons of clones, tons of helper T cell clones with the same exact TCR seen over here, the same exact TCR, which allows tons of these helper T cells to recognize quite equally tons of the same antigen because there is more antigen being displayed everywhere. All the, help, all the APCs are basically displaying all of the same antigen all throughout because that's what's infecting at the current state on tons of APCs. So take a look here. You have a lot of the same TCRs that can bind to a lot of the same fragments on a lot of the same APC displaying molecules, MHC2. This causes a widespread activation of many, many, many helper T cells, a widespread activation of many, many helper T cells based off of this recognition and cytokine production is going to then finally allow for the following. These, the tons of the activated helper T cells will directly be involved in activating the effector B cells and T cells. These are the guys who do the job of really making sure this pathogen is defeated because what's going to happen is the B cells upon activation will start, uh, will start utilizing and creating an effect on humoral defenses, 
The T cells upon activation, specifically the cytotoxic T cells, T sub C, we'll talk about them next. These will be involved in cell-mediated immunity. They'll be activated and they'll be actively circulating the body, killing any affected cells. This means that antibodies will be actively circulating the body, trying to kill any pathogens. And then overall, please, please, please take a look at figure 43.16. This is very overwhelming to think how much activation is necessary, how many different receptor recognition things need to happen. Figure 43.16 shows you the central role. It's a perfect way to describe helper T cells. Central role of helper T cells in order to activate adaptive immunity. That's their job. They're the middlemen. They're going to make sure that adaptive immunity, humoral and cell mediated is effectively activated throughout the body because they're going to be the ones first initially being activated by an APC that has the antigen fragment that's currently causing problems within the body. That covers our look at helper T cells. What we're going to now be looking at specifically are these, the cell-mediated cytotoxic T cells.